Yo, you, no, you're not putting me on a desk. No, uh, uh, uh. Did you see my sticker? It says XP Media Center Edition, and it's from 2005. So you're not putting me on a desk. No, 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 no. Not with AMD. I got Nvidia. You're not putting me on the desk. No, 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 no. I'm a survivor. Oh, wait, wait. I told you not to have. Oh, a TV. Eh, close enough. Ah, uh, the Compact Presario SR192 4NX. A model name that long deserves an edition of Windows XP that long. Anyways, this is the official computer of... I want to be a media center machine, but... Eh... Powered by an AMD Athlon 64 3700+, 2 gigs of RAM, a 200 gig hard drive, a DVD burner, multi-in-one card reader, and an NVIDIA GeForce 6150LE integrated graphics, this system has been mainly designed for multimedia use. And also one thing to note, this is most likely one of the latest machines Compaq ever built before, well, HP buying them out. This one did see some scraps and damages, and as you can see here, we're missing this door, and this little device, this little guy here, this little door, oh, Spring's gone. We have our multi-card reader and one USB 2.0 port at the very front, going down a bit. We have a line-in, microphone, and headphone jack, one firewire port, and two more USB 2.0 ports. So that's a total of three ports in the front. Not bad. Going down some more is all this crazy shenanigan, blah 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 blah, look at me, look what I can do, yay. And I'm designed for XP and capable of Windows Vista. At the back, at the very bottom, we have a tiny little left up modem jack. And what's this? That's not an integrated graphics card. Actually, it turns out this is an ATI Radeon X700, I believe, that was left with this machine. Going on up, we have our surround sound for USB 2.0. I believe this is a gigabit Ethernet, another Firewire car, uh, what Firewire port, excuse me, a VGA, an SPDIF out, a PS2 for the keyboard and mouse, and your power supply, which is not stock from Compaq. One way to know if it would have been a stock Compaq, you wouldn't have the switch, there'd be no sticker, and you'd have a green light somewhere around here or here. Okay, installed in there is only one gate for the moment being because I gutted the machine first to make sure everything was working fine. Here's our CPU fan cooler, everything works. Downwards, this is our ATI Radeon X700, but I'm not too sure if that is the case because uh, it doesn't have uh, active cooling. And of course, in the later years, ASUS pretty much made Compaq and HP's board, and this one is no different with the 88N LA at the very bottom, right there. Expansion wise, at the very bottom right, we have four serial ATA connectors, two IDE connectors right here. This is the primary, this is the secondary. Tucked in, and you can barely see it. It's right there, is your lonely little floppy drive connector. So, let me go ahead and throw this bundle of tricks back together and let's fire it up for a test drive. Uh, in case you didn't know, the fish wouldn't start properly with the third uh, stick of RAM. The aftermarket kicks then ram out of all plates, out of all things. Anyways, two gigs of RAM it is. So of course I did pop the CMOS battery, so of course it won't uh, keep the settings. Duh. And no floppy disk. We have three choices for languages. We have our DVD burner and our 200 gig hard drive, which ironically still works. Anything in gray is a bit of information. Ooh, let's go to advanced. Yeah, because it's advanced. Well, the only thing we're looking at here is really if the operating system's plug and play, your primary adapters, PCI or PCI Express, like this one is. Uh, well, what's the point of changing settings? I'm going to lose them anyways. Uh, so yeah, you get all these nice little features. You can enable uh, <clears throat> two different controllers with serial ATA, which is port 1, 2, and 3, 4, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
correct me if I'm wrong, the onboard audio, you can enable it, or it'll automatically disable itself if you have an extra sound card. Uh, some more shenanigans, look at the temperature, oh boy. Yeah, that's, um, in the BIOS, they're basically nearly full load, so... Eh. Power we got, well, not much. Boom. Well, the priority is the floppy group for some reason. Let me go ahead and fix that up. And of course, you can save changes and yada yada yada. Well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save the settings so you can see the nice splash screen. And ooh la la, look at this. Mmm, smells a lot like Compact, all right. Okay, so now we're going to see. Oh, it is an X600. Ooh, I'm so sorry, but still. The next 600 passively cool, that's a recipe for disaster. There's our CPU, and I am sorry, it is a 10 100 megabit Ethernet. It is not a gigabit like I thought. Darn it. Well, it is socket 939, so. Well, even though it needs to be refreshed, it's the same bloody thing. The only thing is I've removed 1 gig of RAM, so. Eh. The lowest would be the 3.7 score on the X600 for some reason, but other than that, everything else should be just doing just fine. So, so with all that said and done, let's go wrap things up and give it a score. So now that we've covered everything, it's time to bring down the scale. So as in terms of reliability, well, this thing's been through hell and back, probably sat in the water like it's uh, Dell Dimension 1000 cousin. And it survived. Sure, I had to let it, uh, you know, get to room temperature and everything, but it worked. It started. It never wanted to die. So, I also do remember that these machines, if you keep them properly maintained, like every other machine should be, they're fairly reliable, especially with the NVIDIA chipset. The one with the ATIs weren't the best, but the NVIDIA ones were definitely superior. So, in terms of reliability, I think it's safe to say. 7. As for expandability, well, you're already a winner with AMD because they did release the dual core AMD Athlon 64H2s and it is a, I think the highest was 3800, I don't think it was 4800, it was 3800 and those were based on the nine, uh, socket 939 so you just swap out, put the new one, good to go. As in terms of expandability on the other side though, you have three PCI slots which is great to get you go great to get you going, and a PCI Express slot, which this guy did use. And you could quite easily fit in um for its age. You could fit in 7800 GT no problem. Power supplies were prone to failure unfortunately on these machines, but luckily again this is not proprietary bullshit and they, you just swap it with a standard power supply or a good grade power supply and boy can you have some fun. It has the advantage of getting up to two five and a quarter inch expansion bays. However, if you do plan on getting something that is not a, an optical drive, anything that is uh, tray loaded, yeah, you're a little limited on that. You also have uh, your your everything in one multimedia card reader, you have lots of USBs. This is this is a perfect machine for those of you who are, you know, great into music and wanting to do a lot of things, get the job done and at a decent price. So in overall I think exp uh, expandability, yeah, it's an easy tag. Gaming! Gaming, gaming, gaming. Can you game on this machine? Well, I'm just going to base it as if it had the integrated graphics uh, chipset, and I'm going to base it for its age, because today it's not going to go far. Maybe two. Unfortunately, the integrated graphics does put a bit of a, nice an a big anchor into it, but I think you could get away with it if you really went crank the settings down to low back then. So I'd say a 5. And as far as this multimedia capabilities, well, we went over it. Lots of USB ports, lots of everything ports. Uh, you could make a nice sound machine out of it, actually. I'm pretty sure you can do some audio editing on that. Not too bad to this day. So I'd say multimedia-wise, it is geared to the it is geared to the teeth. So nine. So in overall, this machine gets an eight out of ten. 
So if you have any questions, comments, anything I've overlooked or not looked at this particular machine, or if you have a story you'd like to share about this particular machine, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And of course, as usual, until next time, stay bold and take care.